It's day 243 of my honeydew germination experiment, and at a first glance, my vines appear to be doing great. And the soil situation has been resolved. You know, there's plenty of hydration for all these vines all the time. However, there's a spider mite problem, and I'll go into that later. So the growth continues to be robust. You can see all these vine offshoots. But I can already tell that my vines are devoting a lot more resources to flowering and female melon formation. So this is a very healthy vine offshoot. It gets more sun than those against the wall. This is what the typical shoot apricot marrow stem looks like these days. They're just bustling with flower primordia. This is a female melon on vine 3. It hasn't bloomed yet. So if you look a short distance to the left, here's a wilted male flower paired with a new female flower. And this is happening on a pretty large scale, so I won't be able to micromanage and hand pollinate every single melon that comes over the next few weeks. Still on vine 3 here, here's another small female flower developing. This is really bad news on vine 1, it's the hallmark of a terminal stage spider mite infestation, just like I'm having with ginger right now. Still on vine 1, here's more evidence of a spider mite infestation. This is on vine 1, so we've just got female pre-melons appearing everywhere. So now I have the opposite problem of having too many female flowers and not enough males. Here's some stationary tripod footage, macro footage, of spider mites crawling around on that one site. So what I did later on was I used a Q-tip and I wiped away all the webs, and this is with progressively faster fast forward. Spider mites use railings, any physical conduits to get around, and they wander like this in their final in developmental stage when they're ready to leave because they've already infested so many places populations are getting too high. So what they can do eventually is spin these little webs like spiderlings and float away from the slightest gusts of wind like we're seeing right now. Here's a test spray of a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution diluted 16 times, so it's 1 16th of 3%. And at first when you spray like that everything freezes up. That's just their survival instinct. But then you see movement again, so you know they're not dead. And that seems to be the problem, like the first spray usually doesn't seem to do anything. I read in an online journal that a 32-fold dilution will kill spider mites dead in their tracks, but I think that was sprayed into a petri dish. Obviously, this is real life. So it's not looking too good. Here's a good test site. So I sprayed once. First spray always seems to disappoint. And this is on fast forward. You can see tons of activity on that stem. Another spray. Not really seeing any running around. That's generally the way it seems to work. I mean, you know, the second spray always seems to be that much more effective. You just need a certain amount of fluid to actually kill these things. Right after I sprayed that one, it's not even moving. You can see the bubbling from the hydrogen peroxide. So here's a good example. I mean, they look dead to me. I'm sticking with hydrogen peroxide for as long as I can because I don't want to poison any insect pollinators and I also don't want to repel hummingbirds. Later on, I made a solution of hydrogen peroxide that was even more concentrated, maybe only tenfold diluted. It's just approximate. And here I'm just doing some, you know, upkeep. I am twirling these vines around this balcony rail so they don't fall too far from the balcony. It's day 244. So there's a lot of foliage on the outside. There's also quite a bit of foliage on the inside these days too because I pulled some vines back, I reeled them in. And you can see some flowering activity but it's not very prevalent yet. So here's the same vine offshoot, the shoot apical meristem and downwards from what I showed you in the last episode. There's virtually a female melon at every node which is great. And this one is pretty mature, it's ready to flower. And there's one that's even more mature at this node. And that still hasn't flowered yet, but it's the biggest by far. So here's a close up. I hand pollinated this one on vine three. 